This is the heat of combustion of paraffin, where we're going to find out how much heat is released when paraffin burns. Uh, paraffin is just another name for wax, so we're going to be burning a candle here. We're going to be seeing how much heat is released as the wax burns. First thing I need to do is find the mass of my candle, so I'll set the candle on the balance, and we have an initial mass of 21.37 grams. 21.37 grams is the initial mass of my candle. Um, the heat from the candle is going to go up and into a soda can filled with water. So we're going to have 100 grams of water, and this is room temperature water that I'm pouring into the soda can. So we have an aluminum soda can which is going to be suspended above the candle. And then we're, as the candle burns, the heat that's released is going to go up and into the water in the soda can. Let's find the initial temperature of the water. So the initial temperature of the water in the soda can, just give a minute to, uh, it looks like 20.5 degrees Celsius is the initial temperature of the water in the soda can. So now let's light our candle. We'll light the candle and we'll let it burn for about five minutes and then we'll find the final temperature of the water. Uh, as the candle's burning and releasing heat into the soda can, I could talk for a minute about the calculations. We're going to use the equation Q is equal to delta T times mass times specific heat for this lab. Uh, whenever you're doing calorimetry, uh, the heat is being released and it's going into some water. We know the specific heat of water and we're going to be able to use the specific heat of water the mass of water and the temperature change of the water to figure out how much heat was absorbed by the water. However much heat was absorbed by the water is equal to the amount of heat that was released by the reaction. So in this lab we know the initial temperature of the water. We measured that before the lab, before we lit the candle. Uh, we know the mass of the water. It's 100 grams because it was 100 milliliters. And we know the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. When the candle's finished burning, we will blow it out and then find the final mass of the candle. We're not going to burn the entire candle, that would take too long, so we're just going to take the difference between the initial and final mass of the candle to figure out how much paraffin was actually burned. So right now we're just continuing to let the candle burn. It's giving off heat into the soda can. There's, th this lab is good in that you can see the heat going up from the candle into the soda can. So it's kind of easy to visualize uh, how the heat is going to travel from the candle into the water and how the water will become warmer. Uh, there are some downsides with this setup. This is not a, a well insulated, insulated calorimeter. So there's definitely going to be some heat escaping around the soda can, which we won't really take into account during our calculations. Uh, so generally we're going to get a slightly lower value for the heat of combustion of paraffin than what the actual value really is. Let's take our thermometer, we'll place it back into the soda can, and we can see that yes, in fact, the water in the soda can has gotten quite a bit warmer. Let's we'll stir it around a little bit. We get an accurate reading, and it looks like we have about 31.32, so far. So we're up about 31.7 degrees for our water in the soda can. So there's a, a, a fair amount of heat being put off by the candle into the water in the soda can. We'll let it burn for about one more minute, and then we'll get our final temperature reading. Okay, so 33.6, looks like it's going to be our, we're getting a little hotter again. Let's stir it. Let's extinguish the candle and then we'll look for a final temperature. So we'll carefully blow out the candle. And then we'll stir this around and get a final temperature. Looks like our final temperature, 34.8 degrees Celsius is our final temperature of the water.
So you can take the difference between the initial and final temperature of the water to figure out the temperature change. The mass is the mass of the water, which was 100 grams, and then the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. You could do that to figure out how much heat was released by the combustion of this paraffin. Uh, this paraffin, we didn't burn the entire candle, so we're now going to figure out how much we actually burned. So I'm going to take the candle and set it over here on our balance again. Try to pick up the wax that, that dripped off as well because this wax didn't actually burn. So we'll try to put that on the balance as well. And our final mass of the candle is 21.06. So you can use that to figure out how much wax was burned. And then once you know how much heat the water absorbed, it's equal to the heat released by the candle, but with the opposite sign. The water's absorbing heat, so it's positive. The candle was releasing heat, so it's negative. And then you can divide by the uh, number of grams of candle that was actually used, and you can convert that from grams into moles to figure out how many kilojoules of heat were released per mole of paraffin being burned.